What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Dual Sense Podcast. This is episode number 73. 73. I am one of your co hosts, Jason, and I am joined, as always, this evening by Toddler Tosser, <laughs> which made me laugh very much, also known as Travis. Travis, mm-hmm. what's, what's going on this evening? I mean, you could have been a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> is this a rap song? I don't know. That I don't know of. So I wanted to, Toddler Toster is a Reddit name I saw earlier, and I laughed hysterically at it because it's so inappropriate. I yes. want to hit you I want to hit you with something really quick before we get started about a game. Okay. So if you're familiar, uh, NASCAR 21 Ignition came out, I think around Halloween, maybe? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. So I'm going to hit you with, with, this, with a few day one patches I enjoyed. And then I'm going to let you guess how many there were total. Okay. Okay. First one that I, these are, this is just a couple that I grabbed that I, that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. Um, Updated Indianapolis intro scenes to remove quote unquote, ugly camera shots. Don't know what that means. (laughs) Fixed an issue where the front splitter of the Camaro would roll in sync with the wheels. That, yeah. Uh huh. Now, you, do you know what that means? Basically, like the front bumper is spinning with the wheel. <laughs> the hilarious. This looks like a snowplow. It is fixed an issue that would cause a car to be on fire at the start of qualifying. <laughs> 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 that one was really uh, good. That is my God my favorite one was fixed an issue. Oh, sorry, last two. Fix an issue that could cause players to fall out of the track at Charlotte and fix an <laughs> issue that would cause the track to disappear at Homestead. <laughs> <laughs> and you never want the track to disappear at home. Uh, my last and favorite one was fix an issue that caused the grass to continuously grow at Watkins Glen. Now, <laughs> what does that mean? Does that mean by like lap 30, yes. it's 10 feet tall? Because if so, that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's my question as well yeah does it look like is it like children of the corn by the time the race <laughs> is over or? so how many again i lost count counting this multiple times so I'm, it's not going to be exact but how many roughly fixes do you think are on the day one patch patch 1.02 mm, roughly how many 83 no higher or lower a uh, higher Jesus Christ. Uh, 127. <laughs> Higher. <laughs> oh my God. 180. Yeah. No, it was 140. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So. Still, still, it's ridiculous. Right. And the, the very first patch was fixed. Basically, they rolled the game out and you couldn't hook up a Logitech G29 or G27 wheel to it which is like a thing people <laughs> bought the game for. So they bought oh the game. You God. literally didn't have wheel adaptability, but they fixed that now. Um, I think mine will work. There are still wheels that won't work on the game. Like if you have a semi cube, it won't work. So yeah. it's fascinating. Um, there's all kinds of stuff on there that's hilarious though. Like if you, could, if you could just go on YouTube and watch some videos, there's like, like the guys will push the car out onto the pit lane for you to start. And then when you start the session, you're, you're, hood will just be bent up like you ran into the wall and it's like it's like the guys push the car too hard (laughs) hilarious well are you bringing this up because it's just the next game in a long list of games that have rocky launches like today being battlefield 2042 launch day for instance and grand theft auto yesterday it's both having rough launches and it just goes to show you that no game big or small is immune to that right and uh, we're going to get into Battlefield 2042 a little bit later when I when we, when we talk about what we're going to be playing. So I have a few things to say about it. I don't have much to report this evening. I got my COVID-19 booster uh, this afternoon. So feeling fine so far. And it was only about six hours ago. So we'll see. The last time I had a COVID shot the next day, I was really tired. I just felt like I just hadn't slept and I just kept falling asleep so uh you know and i i didn't i didn't know you never you never you're never sure you know you one of those times you may fall asleep and not wake up right so right the man what, we're a, all what a blessing for. that would be yeah that sweet release did you get 
did you get the COVID booster or as the boomers call it, the COVID booster? Because I'm not sure if those are two different things. <laughs> Dude, they they do love calling it COVID with an E, but in fact, in fact, it is COVID with an I, yeah, correct? Like video, like video. I mean, I don't know how else we can do this. Man, that's a good video you're watching there. So. Well, they spent half of their <laughs> uh, half of their early schooling underneath the table, like that was going to save them from a nuclear blast. So I don't know what I expect. <laughs> fair, that's fair. Well, anyway, Travis, for the uninitiated or the noobs here to the show, we are a weekly podcast where you and I get together and discuss all of the news, rumors, new games, and more in the world of PlayStation. We do so all in under ninety minutes every week. We post new episodes on Monday on all the usual podcast services around the world, this slow and dying world. And we also post our episodes on YouTube. And you can also engage with us on all the usual social media outlets, which we would love to hear from you, such as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. What else? Oh, we also have a blog, at uh, which is called the thedualsensepodcast.wordpress.co. So just find us on whichever you prefer. We'd love to hear from you. Love to talk with you. Talk with you. Talk PlayStation. Talk boomers. Talk COVID vaccines. Talk NASCAR glitches. Anyway, <laughs> Travis, we have a lot to get through here. Let's jump right into the news with number one. Publisher Electronic Arts is bringing back the long dormant Fight Night franchise, according to Tom Henderson and website Video Games Chronicle. The new entry in the boxing game franchise is codenamed Moneyball. Great name. Mm-hmm. And production has already been greenlit by EA, although development is on pause until after the next UFC game, which is planned to release late next year. Developer EA Canada stated in a studio wide email that strong marketplace competition has made it challenging to get the proper amount of staff for Fight Night, which was supposed to be in development alongside UFC 5. The Fight Night series is a spiritual successor to EA's Knockout Kings which ran from 1998 to 2003, respectively. Fight Night's first entry was 2004's Fight Night 2004, of course, which released on PS2, and the most recent game in the series is Fight Night Champion, which released on PS3 in 2011. Dang. What do you think? I can't believe it's been that long. That doesn't seem like it really has been. Yeah, a decade. Well, I see. So, you know, we were in our group text trying to guess what this EA Mm. you know whatever game was going to be and i know you said something about what was it what did you say command and conquer is that what it was army yeah of I said command I and conquer or Ar- army of, <laughs> army of two <laughs> there you go <laughs> well anyway yeah. so i was scrolling through old ea titles and and those were really good guesses honestly and i, I saw fight night and i texted you this i saw fight night and i thought that's ridiculous like why would they do that and it, it I, the mm. reason i thought it was ridiculous is because it's a game that i want so Anything that I want, I assume is ridiculous at this point in my life. So I just didn't think it was going to happen. And I'm kind of stoked about it, honestly. I'm 100% on board with them waiting till UFC is out. That makes sense to me because I would rather them focus on the game than try to do two different kind of fighting things at the same time. Right. I had so much fun with Fight Night. I remember it being difficult. I don't think I ever beat Muhammad Ali. I think that was impossible. I remember... Mm. I remember knowing I was going to have to fight Muhammad Ali and like not wanting to play the game. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Like, my hands were sweating. I'm like, dude, I can't, like, what do you want me to do? He's fucking Muhammad Ali. Of course, I was like 11 at the time. So it was like, well, actually, that's probably 13, but you get the idea. It was just like the idea that you could beat a video game boss on PS2 Mm -hmm. didn't really click with me in the way it does now. Right now, I'd be like, well, I'll just grind it and I'll beat this motherfucker. But when I was like that old, it didn't make sense. But, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm stoked. I want to play with Tyson Fury. I want to knock out Deontay Wilder. I want to do all the things. Um, I want to see if Anthony Joshua, I want to fight him. I didn't realize I knew so many boxers. Hopefully I can knock out Jake Paul because he's an asshole. So you know, those are my goals for the game. Yeah, yeah. Darren Williams. Fuck. You know. Frank Gore. <laughs> Frank fair, Gore. Yeah. Fair question about this sort of resurgence of athletes like Nate Robinson boxing and getting fucking dropped by a YouTuber. A great question yeah. is, you know, the boxing is historically a sport that poor people get into. All you have to have are your fists and be in shape, you know, right. why, right. why retire from a sport with CTE 
to then jump into a sport with more CTE. I just don't understand that, Frank Gore. I don't get it. Like, you don't have to be punched yeah. in the face anymore. You're a millionaire. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, like go go play in the World Series of Poker. You know, right? Like some, do golf. Some, yeah, <laughs> yeah, go like go. Yeah, do something like that. Like you're just stupid if you try to become a pro boxer right. at you know whatever thirty five or forty. Yeah, but um, I'm I'm low key stoked for this. I am too. I, I know this is not news. This is not big news or even news to a lot of people because fight night. And sports games in general are somewhat niche, although historically always some of the best selling annually, like FIFA, NBA, Madden, so on. So a big audience. But I have a hot take about this. I believe that a boxing game or fighting games in general are perhaps the best subgenre of sports games to okay. really to really showcase the next gen hardware. Okay. Explain. And what I mean by that is if if you'll remember Fight Night back on PS3, not maybe not Champion. I don't I actually don't remember remember playing Champion. I remember playing four and three. Mm-hmm. And I remember being blown away at like the muscle deformation, you know, how you could see the muscles move oh, yeah. and contract in the face when you punch somebody in the face and the face mm-hmm. cheeks and everything move the and sweat. The sw- and the sweat. Like, yeah, that 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 blew blew me away. And oh, you remember the corner? In the corner you could like heal yourself with those pads and stuff yeah do the cuts and the cold and the ice you know and everything yeah absolutely so all that blew me away not only that but now in particular on the ps5 in addition to graphically because you're just focusing on really two people like that's where all your graphical fidelity the majority of it has to be right you don't have to worry about all these environments and all this shit like you just just you just put all your fucking horsepower right there so not only that, but on the PS5, you have the dual sense. And just think about, think about, you know, the, the, the adaptive triggers swinging your punches and giving you all the feedback and then the haptics in the controller when you, you know, if you get punched in the stomach, you feel it on the lower part of the controller and that sort of thing. Yeah. Like that excites me greatly. And, uh, not to mention, not to mention PSVR two, you know, oh, this call. game, you know, this game is going to have a VR mode. And if they don't, it's they're stupid. Dude, you could work out with that. You, yeah, that's a workout. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so not only imagine it on PS5 in general, next gen exclusive game, but imagine it on a next gen PSVR. So, back to my overall point and hot take is that I think this game and potentially UFC in the future because they're both fighting games. But in particular this game could be the best showcase of next gen power in the sports genre going forward. So I'm very excited about it. I have fond memories of fight night like you do growing up. Uh, also remember being terrified to fight Ali, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, so I'm excited about this one. This is great. So EA it's EA man has gone from being just everybody hated their fucking guts like a decade ago to now EA of like the big publishers like Ubisoft and, and uh, Activision, especially Activision, like EA is probably the most <laughs> beloved now out of all of those, you know, bringing back NCAA football, bringing back fight yeah. night. It helps when you don't, you know, sexually harass people and be misogynistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. That it's a big, it's a big but, one. I think that they, yeah, it seems like the last year or two, they really capitalized on bringing back two franchises that I know a lot of people really, really liked, especially in our generation. And mm-hmm. I don't think, you know, I think I've read some stuff that they're like, well, this is this is all probably in response to FIFA. They saw FIFA coming and to to the point mm-hmm. you made about the stuff we've when we talked about FIFA and EA splitting up and to the stuff we've read since then and to your point that seems that seems honestly to be on point, pun intended. Um, I don't think that that matters. And I think they already had this in, in play for a while. Number two, our beloved PlayStation 5, Travis, turned one year old this week as its November 12th birthday was celebrated in a PlayStation blog post by Mr. Jim Ryan, the president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment. In the post, Ryan shared that more than 360 games released on PlayStation 5 in its first year alone, while reiterating that there are more than 25 games in development for the system at PlayStation Studios. Also, Sony's PS5 telemetry shows that players logged more than 4.6 billion of the B hours of gameplay and broadcasted over 26 million hours of content. And finally, 
Jim shared that the top 10 most played games during PS5's first year based on gameplay hours were number one, Fortnite, followed by Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, FIFA 21, NBA 2K21, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Destiny 2, MLB The Show 21, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Demon Souls, and NBA 2K22. Any thoughts? Yeah, did um, I don't, I don't think I heard anything from Xbox today. That's that's weird. You think they would be? <laughs> did, it, did did it die? I, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> They've got their big anniversary on uh, coming up on the fifteenth. Uh huh. Anyway, so, so buckle up. <laughs> right, I'm sure it'll be exciting. They can talk about how they had three games. Um, <laughs> the four point six billion hours is outrageous, and if you don't know how crazy the billion is like like we talked about a couple of weeks ago like it would take you 30 years to spend one billion dollars spending like a dollar a minute or something like that so yeah yeah the amount of hours played on the system is bananas it doesn't really make sense and you literally i don't know if you can watch 26 million hours of content before you die i, I didn't look at, i didn't look that up but it's freaking yeah. silly how much content there is out there created off of this one thing and that goes for really any gaming um in the last year now the gameplay hours, I think, are really interesting. Destiny Two on that list, not mm-hmm. surprised because I know it's it's not you know it's basically free. I get all that, but I just didn't expect to see it there. Sure, I feel like we don't hear about it enough for it to be there. All the other games on this list, we hear about them a lot, and I just don't hear about Destiny a lot. I don't hear about it on Reddit a lot. I don't hear about it. Maybe I'm just insulated from it indirectly because i haven't went out of my way to not hear about it it just seems like it's dead to me and that's that's fascinating um yeah fortnite's no surprise cause no surprise fifa is a little bit surprising to me and i think assassin's creed being on there says a lot about how long the game is for no reason (laughs) dude i know yeah that's a good that's actually a really good point about that game (laughs) if you got sucked in you're gonna dump 100 hours into it so it's like it's like spider-man though like that isn't a very long game considering what no. we're used to. And it has that many hours locked on it. So, you know, I, That's a good I, mean, point. I guess my question would be like, what are the actual numbers on these are like the top five, super, super far ahead. And then the bottom five are punched yeah. in really close because, you know, 2k 22 is on there and it just came out. Yeah. But that being said, it seems like there's a lot of 2k 22 content, but you know, I'd say it's been a banner year. For the PS5, I think they've created a, a separation you want. You know, if we were in a race, they are out of the draft zone at this point. Like, you don't have to worry about Xbox catching you on the draft at this point. They're going to catch you because you make a mistake. So, you know, that's, I think that's what you want to do in your first 12 months is kind of separate yourself. And they've got some heat coming up with Battlefield just now. Um, I know it is on cross platform. I get that, but my point is, there's still new games coming to PlayStation, and in February we have God knows what coming out, and hopefully in March, Everything. Blood Gran Turismo. So we'll see. You know that that gap, you know that gap between the two that's already perceived to be huge will continue to grow most likely. But I'm telling you, next year when we do this, it the billions of hours is going to be even higher because they're going to release these games that people are going to die in. <laughs> yes, they're they're on the way. Yeah, absolutely. It's it was a great first year for PS5. The pace of it in terms of chasing after PS4 units sold and that sort of thing has slowed down. Uh it's not necessarily keeping pace with PS4 like it was, but that's more so because of COVID. But in terms of the engagement with the system itself, like you said, 4.6 billion hours of gameplay is just stupid. It's it's unfathomable. And they had, I can't remember at what, po- at what point this year, but they came out and said basically that they were seeing like record numbers of engagement and hours played on the mm-hmm. platform. And, you know, of course, that's been because of the last 18 months of COVID too. People have been at home, they've been locked down, they've been working from home, whatever. So that there's natural growth there. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's a good system and it's obviously doing incredibly well. And um, in terms of the top 10, most played games the one that really stood all kind of like you said all of those for the most part make sense the one that really stood out to me was nba 2k 22 22 excuse me cracking the top 10 and it's only been out for like a couple months and actually there was a little asterisk at the bottom of this article they took all this data uh through september the 30th so it was really only out like a month and crack when they took this data and it cracked the top 10 so 
that's insane to me that people played, you know, enough 2K in 30, 30 fucking days to have it crack the top 10 most played games. But, you know, that shows you how powerful, <laughs> again, sports franchises are in gaming. But uh, nonetheless, uh, a good year for PS5. I tweeted earlier and I maintain that the Astros Playroom is my favorite game of the yeah. first year of PS5 that I've played. I'd agree. So. Yeah, that is chivalry probably for me. I mean, if you're talking about single player, though, 100% Astros. Yeah, chivalry probably overall. First party stuff, Astros Playroom. All right, number three, Travis, along those similar lines here. We have a lot of kind of sales data rolling in here, and number three is no different. As PlayStation shared October's most downloaded games from the PlayStation Store this week, and on the PlayStation 5, the top most downloaded uh, video game was Far Cry 6, followed by FIFA 22, Back for Blood, Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, The Hinokami Chronicles. <laughs> NBA 2K22, Guardians of the Galaxy, Madden NFL 22, NHL 22, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Alan Wake Remastered, Deathloop, Riders Republic, The Dark Pictures Anthology, House of Ashes, or House of Asses, Kana, Bridge <laughs> of Spirits, Diablo 2 Resurrected, Hot Wheels Unleashed, Mortal Kombat 11, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, and Star Wars a Jedi Fallen Order at number 20. And then over on PS4, the most downloaded game was FIFA 22, Far Cry 6, Back for Blood, Madden NFL 22, NBA 2K22, Demon Slayer, Grand Theft Auto 5, NHL 22, Insurgency Sandstorm, Minecraft, God of War, Call of Duty, Black Ops Cold War, Red Dead Redemption 2, Friday the 13th, Diablo 2 Resurrected, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Mortal Kombat 11, Game Beast, Need for Speed Heat, Naruto to Baruto, Shinobi Striker at number 20. On PSVR, the most downloaded game was Beat Saber, Job Simulator, Batman Arkham VR, The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, Aren't We All, Super Hot VR, Swordsman VR, Gorn, Paranormal Activity, The Lost Soul, Arizona Sunshine, and Rick and Morty Virtual Reality at number 10. And then finally, in the free to play category for both PS4 and PS5. The most downloaded game was eFootball 2022, followed by Fortnite, Call of Duty Warzone, Rocket League, Enlisted, Genshin Impact, Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Rec Room, and Split Gate at number 10. All right. A lot of, uh, a lot of data there, a lot of games. What is uh, anything that stands out to you here from any of these? Sure. I mean, on the five, uh, what is Demon Slayer doing? That is crazy to me that it's on there and on the floor. Like, what are we doing, guys? Uh, but that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. You know, I feel like that's kind of a reflection. I had this is more of a philosophical discussion, and um, I know Japanese culture and Chinese culture is different, and saying Asian culture probably isn't politically mm -hmm. correct, nor is it a thing. But I'm going to use it in this context. But these, like a game like Demon Slayer, I, I feel like that the Asian you know, the anime stuff, the idea of their artwork, um, the music, the K-pop stuff, all of the sort of Asian influence. I feel like the games are kind of reflect that. Whenever I see a game like that pop up on one of these lists, I'm like, okay, they're infiltrating us. <laughs> 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 but you love to see Far Cry up there. Um, yeah. I'll get around to that at some point, hopefully when it's on sale soon. Uh, FIFA, no surprise. 2K being up there, not a surprise. Uh, not, Back for Blood, not a surprise. So... You know, nothing there too crazy as far as anything I'm seeing. Um, I feel like Riders Republic's a little low for what mm. you were, what I would be hoping a game like that to do. Um, mm. I'd want that to be in the top five if I was them. Maybe I you know I'd like to know what their expectations were, but um, it, you know, there's not really a game like it, and I feel like it had enough pub that it it could have been a little bit higher. But you know, it is what it is. And then on. Of course, Gang Beast is super weird to me that it just randomly pops up there, but that's cool. Yeah, and yeah. Insurgency Sandstorm is like three or four years old. Yeah, although it just came out on PS4, remember? Right, right. But And people love it that mm -hmm. have played it before. It has a really good rating online and good reviews, so that's interesting to me. Um, nothing on PS4 for vr is is a ps4 vr nothing on the <laughs> ps vr is surprising it's you know it's, that is what we would expect yeah it's like the same every month and then in the free to play you know e-football as bad as it is being number one is interesting um yeah. i wonder if people were playing fifa and then they were like maybe maybe they didn't want to pay 
So they're like, well, let's try the free one. And then they're like, this fucking sucks. So yeah. I'd love to see the delete rate, <laughs> see what games got deleted <laughs> at the highest rate on the PS5. Uh, I bet it was that. Mm-hmm. Enlisted, we've played that before and we didn't like it. And I told you earlier this week, there was a game, a gamer who put up a video about it. It was like the World War II simulator we're waiting for. And it's like, not it, but okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, nothing else on that list is really surprising. Um, you know, if I'm split gate, I'm a little bit worried to be at 10 especially mm. when you got a hundred million dollar influx a couple of months ago so yeah just just stuff like that is a little bit worrisome but i mean i guess if you have your player base they don't really need to download it but you yeah. know nothing there too surprising really except for um that asian game i talked about earlier demon slayer uh, a few things so first of all far cry 6 debuting first on ps5 and second on ps4 that's huge i think that's a really big deal um you know out out downloading i guess out selling on the ps store you know games like fifa 22 nba 2k 22 for instance uh, that's pretty huge i i did not expect that i expected it to be you know pretty high but number number one is pretty outrageous so uh, that game must be doing pretty well even even if people do have far cry fatigue so to speak uh back for blood debuted at three uh it came out in october that's pretty good for it as well as you mentioned, I feel like Riders Republic is a little bit low. However, that game I think came out on like the twenty sixth or twenty seventh, something like that. Toward oh, that's the end true. The, toward the end of the month. However, so did Guardians of the Galaxy, and Guardians of the Galaxy is number six. So I don't know. I you know, it's probably just because maybe it's the type of game it is. I don't know. We'll see how it does if it's still there. If it's not there next month, that game's dead. DOA. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. Nothing on PS4 I really want to say anything about. PSVR is the same as always, pretty much. However, free-to-play stuff is extremely interesting to me. So, like you said, eFootball 2022 debuts at number one in the most downloaded free-to-play games against everything else that we know are juggernauts, Fortnite, Warzone. And it just makes you wonder if they could have just stuck the landing just a little bit with that game. If it wasn't a complete disaster. You know, what could they be on to is what I'm trying to get at, you know, and maybe they'll still be around and maybe they'll figure it out. But like, you know, at first I didn't think eFootball was going to make it. But after seeing this at number one, and maybe they can compete with FIFA with this type of model. I don't know. Time will tell, but we'll see how poor the launch, of uh, how poorly the launch affects their long term prospects. And then Splitgate falls all the way down to number 10. Uh, this month, this time around. I have a prediction about Splitgate, though. We're going to see it at the Game Awards in a few weeks, and they're going to announce their next-gen versions of the game, and it's going to launch the same day as the Game Awards. So remember that when that happens, you heard it here first, okay? (laughs) Number four, the MPD Group, Travis, released their October industry sales data on Friday. And the PlayStation 5 remains the best-selling hardware platform of 2021 in dollar sales, while the Switch still leads in units sold. Far Cry 6 debuted as October's best-selling game, including as the number one selling game on PlayStation for the month. In terms of software, Ghost of Tsushima was October's 13th best-selling game regardless of platform, while Spider-Man Miles Morales was 17th for the month and the year's 6th best-selling game overall. Likewise, MLB The Show 21 is the year's third best-selling game regardless of platform, and the white DualSense PS5 controller remains the year's best-selling accessory. And finally, the top 10 best-selling games on PlayStation platforms for the month, which do not include digital sales, were in order. Number one was Far Cry 6, followed by Back for Blood at number two, Madden NFL 22 at three, FIFA 22 at four, Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, The Hinokami Chronicles at five, (laughs) Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy at 6, NHL 22 at 7, NBA 2K 22 at 8, Ghost of Tsushima at 9, and Spider-Man Miles Morales at 10. So, not only was Far Cry 6 the most downloaded digital game on the PS Store, but it was also the most bought physical game on PlayStation. Any thoughts on any of this? Yeah, I would like them to be called the NPC group. (laughs) It's just right (laughs) right there. It's right there. It really is. Yeah, again, nothing surprising about the sales. All that stuff's what we expected. I, I'm curious to see if they if PlayStation surpasses the Switch and units sold by the end of the year. That might be 
a tall ask since they just replaced them in dollar sales. But I mean, I guess those two things might go hand in hand eventually at some point. I guess I kind of have to. Sure. Again, none of these games are super surprising. Um, I forget that people buy discs. So <laughs> you know I what know, I mean? Like I, I just don't even think about it anymore. I don't even look at the games in the stores anymore. But, you know, nothing nothing out of the ordinary here. Uh, Madden is interesting. I, there's not another football game to play, but, you know, NHL... I feel like when it first comes out, it's always pushing the top five for a month or two. And I feel like every year it's people like us who think this could be really cool and then it's never what you want it to be. Mm. I haven't looked this year to see what the reviews are about it, though. But I fully expect that not to be there next month <laughs> in any way, shape or form. Yeah, yeah, it'll fall drastically. So obviously the biggest news, in my opinion, is that the PS5 remains the best-selling hardware in uh, dollar sales for the year. It's pretty big. Still can't outsell the Switch in terms of units, though. So, you know, Nintendo still moving the most units there. I'm still really, you know, we were just talking about, you know, digitally on the PS Store, Far Cry 6. I'm, I'm extremely impressed with and surprised by this game selling so well. I don't really know why. It's obviously a big franchise, but just debuting at number one on both physical and digital charts is surprising to me. Uh, as much as people uh, bitched about it, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, people talked about, I mean, honestly, yeah, when the reviews came out and everything, they were like, oh, it's more Far Cry. It's not really, you know, nothing totally remarkable. It's fine, whatever. Well, obviously that didn't fucking matter because people were buying it like crazy. And uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy debuted at six here as well on the physical charts after only about four days on the market back for blood at two. So really strong debuts for all of those games. And then there's Spider-Man miles Morales still hanging on in the top Always 10. There. It's been there since the launch of the PS five. Uh, so that, that game is, has done incredibly well. And we wonder why they're making a Wolverine game in addition to another Spider-Man game. Well, that's probably why. Yeah, Something can we like get that. Wolverine? I'm tired of waiting. It's been it's been a month <laughs> since I found out. I'm ready to go. <laughs> they should have it out now. Uh, so yeah, it's very strong uh, month of sales for PS5 and, and these games, and uh, we'll see how the holidays treat these titles. Number five, Colt hit PlayStation Town Building Cooperative Online game, The Tomorrow Children will live once more as developer Q Games announced that they have struck a deal with the Sony Interactive Entertainment to regain the rights to the IP. For those unfamiliar, the Tomorrow Children was developed in collaboration with the Sony Japan Studio and released as an early access title in September of 2016 before being shut down in November of 2017. So pretty short run there. The <laughs> game was mostly panned critically, but found a dedicated and loyal cult following Travis. What is most noteworthy about this story, however, is that Sony relinquished control of a second party IP, which it rarely ever does. This is likely due in part to the president of Q Games, Mr. Dylan Cuthbert, having previously worked at Sony Computer Entertainment back when it was Sony Computer Entertainment from the mid 90s to the early aughts. In a press release, Q Games thanked Sony Interactive Entertainment for the historical move and announced that the game will be returning in the future with the developer already, quote, tweaking and reworking parts of the game every week, end quote. Hmm. So, have a somewhat, uh, not somewhat, but very rare move here by Sony, giving IP back to a developer that they right. uh, funded to create. So, you have any thoughts on this? You know, I think for some people who listen to this podcast, this is kind of maybe a deep dive, but this is kind of like, I know it's number five on the list, but this could easily be much higher. Like, the fact that they gave sure. an IP back is insane. Um, an insane, yeah. like not in the crazy sense of the term. I mean, insane is in like it's it's unprecedented, and that's pretty awesome. <laughs> if, mm -hmm. if you're them, the cool part about this is it, it, this game feels like an underdog in some way. Like you know, it had a cult following, it was panned, but then it had this cult following. People really got behind it, and now it's getting reborn in a way. It just feels like. It just feels like a real underdog and like they have like a second chance to kind of write the ship, if mm -hmm. you will. I think that's really interesting. And I wonder if Sony thought it's I just I would love to be like a fly on the wall and, and hear the conversation or the thought like I don't feel like this is something that they, that they did in passing. I, I don't feel like they were just like, oh, whatever, you know. Yeah, let's just let them have it back. I feel like they must have done it 
for they must see something enough to think if we let it go, it will probably come back tenfold. That they must see something there. That's a good point. I, I'm curious about that as well. Like, like you talked about, like I mentioned in the write up, like Sony doesn't hardly ever give back, you know, IP that a second party developer has created for them. You know, imagine if, imagine if uh, Hideo Kojima and Sony had a falling out. You know, Sony owns the Death Stranding IP, for instance. But then imagine 10 years from now, not 10, well, whatever, six years from now. <laughs> Imagine six years from now, Sony gives the Death Stranding IP back to Hideo Kojima, and then now it's on Xbox and P- and everywhere else, right? So yeah. um, that's not the best example because Hideo is his own is is Hideo, but just it's something like that, right? It, in comparison, and it doesn't happen a lot. So I think that the relationship of this guy and Sony uh, obviously played a part. Played a part, but to your point, it makes me wonder, like. Is this literally just like a like a handshake, like, hey, cool, man. Yeah, you can have it. No big deal. Here it is. Or is it one of these things where, because they're going to re- re-release the game, is it one of these <laughs> things where like, Sony was like, all right, cool. You can have the IP back. You can do whatever you want with it, but we want, you know, 5% of anything you make on it in the future. You know? I don't know. Right, I don't know how crazy. that stuff works. Yeah, I don't know how that works, but I, w- I would love to know. That's the type of, type of stuff that makes me curious, but I remember playing this game on PS4 and not understanding what it was because <laughs> <laughs> you should look it up. It has a very striking art style. It's still, it's very unique still this day. And I did not realize playing the game at the time that it was like this. It was almost like it was kind of ahead of its time. It was almost like, um, what are these? Like, what are they like? Uh, Among like, us? It was, also, what are you it was like. No, it was almost like Animal Crossing or like oh. something like that, like a like a life sim, like city building thing. Like people would play, like you'd be playing, and you would see randomly like other players, and like one person would be like mining rocks from a mountain, like off in the distance, and then somebody would need to go over and get them and cart them back to town and put them in like the refinery, and like you were working together to build this town is basically what you're doing. So it was kind of like an MMO type of game. And at the time I didn't understand it and I didn't appreciate it, but I'm super intrigued by this. And I, if they, whenever they re-release it, I think I'm going to go back and check it out and see, you know, because obviously there's something there because people love it. A group of people love it. It's a really cool looking game just graphically on its own, but I'm really intrigued by the story in general. So I don't know. I'm going to give it another another shot when it comes out and see what I missed back then, what I didn't understand. Number six, a new article from a Polish website claims that voice actors Troy Baker from The Last of Us and Death Stranding and Roger Clark, who's Arthur Morgan, are working on a new game called Fort Solus, which is in development at a studio called Fallen Leaf. The rumor does have some weight behind it as Clark posted a photo of the two together in motion capture suits on Instagram just this week. According to a translation of the article, Fort Solace is in development at Fallen Leafs Warsaw and Liverpool offices, with around 20 staff working on the project between the two. The article says, quote, Fort Solace is a game from a third-person perspective. The plot focus focuses on the fate of two <laughs> focuses on the fate of two heroes, Jack and Jessica. Responding to an SOS signal from a nearby Mars research facility, Jack heads to the site to investigate it. The production budget is estimated at Polish or P O N ten million, which is Polish ten million. I don't know how what that equates to or uh, converts to. And the game is uh, to debut on PC and consoles in the first quarter of 2023, end quote. The game is being developed on Unreal Engine 5, and it will feature top-of-the-line character models, animations, and environments. It is claimed, the article also claims, that a vertical slice of the game will be ready to, by the end of this year, with the studio beginning talks with major publishers, including Sony, in early 2022. What do you think? That can't be right. I'm trying to figure out how much money this is. Yeah, how much is Polish ten million? Well, it's telling that me it's like a lot. It's telling me it's two hundred and fifty million U.S. dollars. Christ, that can't be right. I mean, that's a triple A. That's a big triple A game. Big. And that's what it says. Am I fucking retarded? Twenty people aren't making that. 
Yeah, that's that can't be right. It says I don't know, maybe. one. It says one Polish dollar is worth twenty five cents. So that would be forty million. Okay, so it's a small game. Yeah, I put I put too many zeros in that. That makes me feel better. Okay. Okay. Well, I was gonna say when you read those names off, I was like, they've got to be paying them a lot of money. So I feel like forty million dollars is a lot of money. Um, <laughs> I mean, they've got to <laughs> yeah. be getting a decent chunk. They're known voice actors, like or character actors. They're not going to be, you know, especially after this guy was just in Reddit, you'd think he would get a pretty decent check out of it. But mm-hmm. which one of them is Jessica? Because they both are males, right? <laughs> That's funny. No, we probably don't know who Jessica is yet. <laughs> oh, well, when I first saw this, I thought, just based off the name Fort Solus, I was like, okay, so Solus is a day on Mars. That makes sense. Fort Solus, got it. I don't know. I have a hard time believing this game's going to be good. <laughs> I don't understand like what it is. Like, Is it a big game? Is it a little game? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. How are they affording these big voice actors? How they, I mean, it's going to be on Unreal Engine 5, top of the line. Like, I don't know. So we're clearly on Mars, but you know, you're, you're responding to an SOS signal from a nearby Mars research facility, which implies we have have some sort of habitat and there are multiple areas that we've inhabited on this planet. So it seems like they're going out into the great expanse of scary Mars to, to help this SOS signal. I don't know, man. It's just, I'm getting deep space vibes on some level and I don't like it. Well, (laughs) it, I I have so many questions and of course we don't know. This is all rumor at this point, but the scale of the game sounds huge because you got two big voice actors, two of the most known voice actors, like you said, in, in the industry, you know, and then like I mentioned, all this top of the line graphical shit, like, but that's not a lot of money. So is it going to be something like an indie game that's just like a 10 hour thing, like eight hour thing, and it's, they're spending all their money on talent. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have a lot of questions, but it's intriguing because of who they have involved on the project. So we'll see if this is true. Number seven, we have a lot of news nuggets as well. Travis, let's, let's, uh, let's dive right in. I should say, feel free to join me. First nugget. Bloomberg reported that Sony has cut its fiscal year outlook for PS5 hardware production from 16 million units to around 15 million units due to component and logistics constraints. God, just fucking fire somebody. (laughs) So uh, getting a PS, finding a PS5 just got a little bit harder. Horizon Forbidden West developer Guerrilla Games shared some new gameplay details for the upcoming title over on the PlayStation blog this week. And while there is nothing terribly newsworthy, there are a few cool tidbits regarding new machines in the game, if you're interested. Jeff Keighley shared a bit about what to expect at the upcoming Game Awards show. The event will include a lot of 2022 and 2023 games, including new game reveals numbering in the quote-unquote double digits. We can also expect a total between 40 to 50 games shown in some capacity, as well as some next-gen specific teases. Gosh, that's overwhelming as fuck. Like, who can play all of these games? Yeah, it's also going to be a three-hour show, so buckle up for that. <sighs> also, Sony updated the PlayStation Store on PS5 and PS app to now notify you when titles on your wish list go on sale, although there has been some debate on whether or not this is actually a new feature. So some people claim that they've been getting notified that their wish list games go on sale, like from day one. Right. It's never done that for me. <laughs> me either. I've, I've never been notified that anything on my wish list is on sale. I've been notified that it's available to pre-order, but that's it. Right. Like maybe if that's what they mean by on sale, like going, like it's physically, oh, on literally, on, yeah, like it's literally going on sale. But in terms of getting a price cut, that's never been a thing. Until I would now. like that. That would be nice because sometimes I forget yeah. what I have on my wish list. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. you just forget about the games. Yeah, exactly. So apparently that's what it now does. We'll see. Next nugget, developer Crystal Dynamics shared the first images in a revealed trailer this week of Spider-Man and of Marvel's Avengers. Low-key excited about that. <laughs> Bullet Hell virtual reality game Yuki will come to PSVR on November 16th. Which, by the way, sounds a lot cooler than it looks. I was like, this sounds interesting. <laughs> and I went to look it up because I thought, you know, I could put it on my wish list for PSVR 2 and like it's not for me. I don't, again, more the agent influence that I don't understand. Yeah. As if Yuki wasn't weird. a giveaway, but. Sure. Also, story-driven adventure life sim game Epic Chef is now available on PS4. 
Electronic Arts revealed that the Season 1 of Battlefield 2042 post-launch content will release sometime in early 2022, featuring a new specialist, Battle Pass, and new Portal content. The game itself will get four seasons of content over the next year. Website Video Games Chronicle reported that Dan Hay, Ubisoft's most senior creative mind behind the Far Cry series, has departed the company after more than 10 years. Hay was already working on the next Far Cry iteration, which Ubisoft reportedly reportedly will turn into a live service game. No wonder he left. Dan didn't want to be a part of that. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, and that's not a fucking that. surprise either, is it? <laughs> exactly. I mean, seriously, the, we've talked about this. The live service game seems like it never works at that level. It seems like it only works for shit you never would expect to play. I don't know. They're going to find weird. a way to ruin all their IP. Yeah, they're going to find That's a fine. way to ruin all of their IP. It's okay. You know, it'll be, we'll just listen, we'll, you know, what? we'll think about Ubisoft and we'll listen to the dance by Garth Brooks and it'll all be okay. <laughs> Next nugget, VGC also reported that former Assassin's Creed lead writer Darby McDevitt, great name, has returned to Ubisoft to work on the series after departing the company back in March. So Darby didn't want to work on the next Assassin's Creed, which is also a live service. And I guess he had a change of heart. So he's back in. Yeah, that change of heart sounded like a cash register. Uh, I did. It had, a dist- had that distinct sound of a cash register. <laughs> also, website Pushquare reported that Horizon developer Guerrilla Games has a new job posting for a project QA lead to work on a quote unquote future project that requires years of experience working with the games as a service model. Here's Sony's live service games incoming. First of yeah, true. But first of all, how long has this been around for you to have years of experience with the service model? Yeah. I yeah, mean, I mean, like, you know, you got you got you got games like Destiny and, you know, the division, those sort. Yeah, but we're like, well, true. I guess years could mean two, but I read that as like fifteen years of experience. Right. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, technically it means two, but yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, you want it's not like somebody's dedicated their entire career to it so to speak. Next nugget, the newly released Grand Theft Auto trilogy, the definitive edition is missing songs from the original soundtracks, such as Michael Jackson's Billy Jean. Although this is the same track list allegedly that has been in the game since 2014. So just a heads up if you're disappointed about that. Also Gran Turismo seven will have more tuning parts than any previous entry in the series. According to a new behind the scenes video from PlayStation and Polyphony also released a developer diary for the game's various tracks this week. Yeah, that's um the the amount of tuning parts is overwhelming and it's going mm-hmm. to be impossible to pick certain things for certain cars, you know what I mean? Like there's so many options. It's like how do you how do you pick a a spoiler out of all of these choices or how do you how do you pick a diffuser out of all these choices? It'll be overwhelming, but I'm I'm oddly excited to tinker with my cars, which I I've never really enjoyed doing, but for some reason, I'm really excited about it now. <laughs> it looked like way too much. It looked like me trying to figure out what to put in my fucking house and fall out. So I, oh, I, yeah. I guess that I, <laughs> I, I, I understand the feeling that you're, that you have uh, the excitement, but it, God, it looked overwhelming. Jesus. <laughs> game, game looks incredible though. I mean, it, it really does. Next nugget, concept art from a canceled Batman game codenamed Project Sabbath. Great name. Surfaced online this week from freelance concept artist Goran Bukovic. The game apparently was set to feature an older, gray-bearded Batman alongside a younger version of the hero, which sounds a hell of a lot like a Batman Beyond game concept, Travis. And that would be (laughs) fucking incredible. That would be fucking incredible. We'll see, won't we? I guess we will. Maybe somebody will revive it one day. Also, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, that's the game they should have made, not Rocksteady, meaning Rocksteady, not fucking Suicide Squad. They should have made a Batman Beyond game. God, that would be awesome. Fuck. All right. Nevertheless, nevertheless. Also, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection has been rated by the Australian Game Ratings Board, hinting that a release is not far off. Good job, Ryan. Yeah, enjoy, Ryan. I'm (laughs) I'm going to pontificate that it's going to release sometime around the movie in February. Everything else is coming out in February. Why the fuck not? Also, Gearbox has released the 2013 Borderlands expansion Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, a Wonderlands one-shot adventure. As a standalone game on the PlayStation Store, likely in an effort to increase interest in the upcoming Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. (sighs) Not interested. Fuck off. Sega, or Sega, or Sega, 
has filed several new trademarks in Japan, one of which is for something called Sonic Frontiers. Perhaps the title of the next mainline entry in the series, which we know is coming next year. I mean, I just, I can't explain to you how much I don't care for Sonic. I just don't care mm. for Sonic. I don't know what it is. Nothing about it is interesting to me. I, I just don't care. Mm. And every time they make a new Sonic, I'm like, can't you do something interesting? I don't know. It's like, <laughs> it's like watching women's basketball. <laughs> That's fair. I, so I have very fond memories of playing Sonic on Sega Genesis growing up, but I don't think I'd ever want to play one today, if that makes sense. So It's a mobile game now. Yeah, I mean, that's honestly, yeah, it's a good point. It really is. It's fucking, what's the fucking Temple? It's Temple Run. It's 2D Temple Run. <laughs> it really is. So, yeah, it's, anyway, we'll quit murdering Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> Also, Back for Blood will get an offline single player mode and an update within the next month. And hackers have uh, hackers have obtained all the PS5's root keys, which is apparently one of the first steps in jailbreaking a console. So get ready for that. Soulsborne style game Lies of P released a new gameplay trailer this week. If you're interested, and the game is based off the original story of Pinocchio, which is uh, and it's scheduled to release sometime in 2023 on PS5. Game looks really cool, actually. Do you know the original story of Pinocchio? I do not. I do not. I, I mean, I do don't you? either. I was just curious. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it is it similar to Life of Pi, uh, but he's wooden? <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. Maybe um, the game looks cool. Oh, is it? You know, is it like he works in a dingy London whorehouse and they make him lie so he can be a dildo? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Too bad, too bad he couldn't be a double-sided one, huh? <laughs> you could just break it off, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah he could. Yeah, they well, he, he could break it off all right. <laughs> Next nugget, Metal Gear Solids 1, 2, and 3 have all been temporarily removed from the PlayStation Store as publisher Konami works to renew, quote, the licenses for select historical archive footage used in-game, end quote. So uh, I don't think there's too much to worry about. I think they will come back. But it is, it does make people nervous nonetheless, including myself. So I hope that you have that Metal Gear Solid HD collection on Vita or PS3 or wherever, just in case, guys. Next nugget Naughty Dog co president Neil Druckmann, Dr. Uckman, has wrapped up his directorial work on HBO's The Last of Us series, and he has returned to do his day job at Naughty Dog. He also updated his Twitter profile this week that said he's working on that playstation game whatever the fuck that means that's called that yeah also website playstation lifestyle reported that square enix has delayed final fantasy 14's endwalker expansion until december the 7th endwalker shovel knight <laughs> endwalker shovel knight dig has been delayed into 2022 by developer yacht club games they also announced that shovel knight pocket dungeon will release on ps4 sometime this winter uh-huh. shovel knight pocket pool i just I'm not a big fan <laughs> of the name Yacht Club Games. It makes me not want to play anything they make. Yeah, it's very pretentious sounding, but apparently Shovel Knight's a fantastic game. I've never played it. Never played it. Bandai Namco Entertainment will pull the plug on Jump Force. What a shame. With digital game, DLC, and in-game content sales ending on February the 7th, while online services will shut down on August the 24th of next year. Warner Brothers General Manager Rachel Wackley? Wakely? <laughs> hinted that the upcoming Hogwarts Legacy game will release next year after the new Fantastic Beast: The Secrets of Dumbledore movie, which comes out on April the 15th. So the game will be out in the second half of next year. Data miners have discovered that Call of Duty Vanguard will be getting an in-game crossover event with popular anime Attack on Titan, and there's now rumors that it's going to also get a crossover with Captain America. Okay. Developer Tab Games announced that action adventure VR game Samurai Slaughterhouse, it's a great name, is in mm-hmm. development for the next gen PSVR. Sounds cool. You, you will like this. It's like it's black and white and it's like drawn kind of. And okay. Yeah. So the description is a Metroidvania style open world with a full length story, NPC interactions, and light RPG features. So you basically nice. Use stealth and creativity to kill people, basically, and it's it's super oh, like yeah. I wouldn't I don't know if you call it manga or like anime inspired because the artwork seems more like 
I don't even know how to explain that. It's just cool. It looks fucking cool. I'm ready. That sounds awesome. I don't know anything about that, but what you just said sounds dope. Also, Uncharted 4 voice actor Warren Cole, who played at villain Rafe Adler, will, uh, will be in 2022's Modern Warfare 2. Activision Blizzard is no longer the most valuable U.S. gaming company after being overtaken in share price by Roblox Corporation. Interesting. Website PlayStation Universe reported that the following games received update patches this week. Fatal Frame and Maiden of Blackwater, Destiny 2, Riders Republic, Ghost of Tsushima, Rogue Company, Enlisted, FIFA 22, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Path of Exile, PUBG, Rust Console Edition, Warframe, and Neverwinter. So if you're waiting for something to be fixed, check it out. A new Sony patent would allow AI to be trained through collecting player data as people play in order to make more challenging AI and better understand player reactions. It's hmm. interesting yeah. and terrifying. That is. It is. It is. Yeah, now, now the cameras are going to know stuff. They're going to know I'm just going to walk into McDonald's and I'm just going to have my food there. <laughs> Dude, that, that day is coming. I'm telling you. That fucking video that I tweeted from uh, whatever about the, ro- the dude interviewing the robot. No, <laughs> that dude interviewing the robot, that shit was scary. Jesus. <laughs> Just fucking watch Terminator, guys. Jesus. All right. Patrick Wren, the former lead multiplayer designer on Halo Infinite, has joined Respawn Entertainment to work on their new Star Wars project. And in a rather curious move, Sony-owned anime service Crunchyroll will get a special 75-day free trial for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers. Hmm. 2K Games announced that it has acquired Elite 3D, a company dedicated to innovating in 2D and 3D artwork for video games, as well as Turia Games, which is co-owned by the founders of Elite 3D. Double payday there. The Australian Classification Board, they're at it again here, posted a rating this week for the Atlas-developed Project Pin. The rating is of the mature variety and mentions, quote, strong violence and sexualized imagery. Nice. God, that sounds awesome. (laughs) I like both of those things. <laughs> Hell yeah. Sounds like a Friday night for me. Deathloop co-director Dinga Bacaba is now the head developer <laughs> or head of development. Jesus Christ. Is now the head of developer Arcane Leon. <laughs> Next nugget. A new rumor suggests that 2023's Call of Duty. God damn it. Why do we know so much about all these Call of Duties? It <laughs> will be another Black Ops game that takes place in the near future. Can't even get one out the door and in the ground, and we already know everything about the next two. The online multiplayer servers for PS3 Classic Killzone 2 has been restored by a group of fans known as PS1, or PlayStation Online Enhanced, or emulated, I'm sorry. Yeah, PS1. The first-person shooter was pulled offline in March of 2018 alongside Killzone 3. What an interesting thing to put your free time into. It is. Yeah, it really I mean, is. I mean, I th- it's kind of cool. Don't get me wrong. I, it's yeah. Just, like, I feel like that sounds so difficult. And who's running the server and, yeah. like, who's paying for it? I have all these questions. But, like, somebody... How's it secure? Yeah. Like, somebody spent a lot of time and money on this, and now they have nothing to live for because they finished it, is what I read. That's what I read. Yeah. They also did this for, like, 100 people, probably. So, there's that. But, anyway. Next nugget. Website Gamatsu reported that publisher... Inin, I-N-I-N, N-N, games will release Cotton Rock and Roll as Cotton Fantasy in the West sometime this winter. The PS4 version of artistic destruction game Break Arts 2 will launch on the PS Store on December 2nd. Publisher Thunderful Games and developer Image and Form Games announced SteamWorld Headhunter, a third-person cooperative action-adventure game and the first entry in the franchise since 2017. That's cool. Ubisoft Montreal announced that Rainbow Six Extraction will launch on PS4 and PS5 on January 20th, as previously leaked. The game will feature cross-play, cross-progression, and cross-save across all platforms, as well as two quote-unquote buddy pass tokens that allow you to invite friends to play the game for free for up to 14 days. With any progression, your friends earn transferring over to the full game if they decide to buy it. And we also learned this week that the game is going to be a $40 video game. That is interesting. Yeah, that simultaneously intrigues me and scares me because I think $40 is a good price point for a game like this. Um, However, the fact that it's $40 makes me feel like this is just a 
something that they should have added as a game mode of Rainbow Six Siege that they're trying to charge $40 yeah. for. Is it DLC or is it an actual release? Correct. Yeah, and the money pr- price, price, I don't know, price suggests quality. Next nugget, Kid A Amnesia, Kid Amnesia Exhibition, which is that weird Radiohead game, if you'll remember from the state of play a while back, will oh. release on PS5 as a free download on November the 18th. Are you talking about the shitty band? Yeah, Radiohead, the band. Yeah, don't give a fine fuck. (laughs) Unique racing game, Super Impossible Road, will launch on PS4 and PS5 in early 2022. 3D platformer Togis Togis, Togis, was announced for consoles and will release sometime in 2022. Black and white platformer White Shadows. Why they gotta be white ones? Will launch on PS5. Yeah, there's black ones too. Will launch on PS5 on December the 7th. Shoot 'em up light game Swordship was announced for consoles and it will launch sometime in 2022. Western inspired Motorvania game Laika, <laughs> Aged Through Blood, mm. awful name, was announced for consoles, but no release date was given. 3D platformer Hell Pie <laughs> was announced for <laughs> consoles and it will launch sometime in 2022. I hear that. <laughs> um, go go ahead. No, 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 you, you go. go. No, you go. <laughs> 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 oh, I was going to say, I'm going to give my wife a hell pie later if she's yeah, not careful. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, you get, you get those from the <laughs> devil. <laughs> oh, boy. Next nugget. Narrative first-person shooter Industria will release on PS5 sometime in 2022. Third-person action-adventure game Wavetail was announced and will be coming to consoles sometime in 2022 following an exclusivity window on Google Stadia. Of all places. Post-apocalyptic open-world RPG Elex 2 will launch on PS4 and PS5 on March 1st from uh, THQ Nordic. I'm intrigued by that. I'll keep my eye on that one. Co- cooperative survival first-person shooter Skur Ritual was announced for PS5 and it will launch sometime in the second half of next year. Genshin Impact version 2.3 called Shadows Amidst Snowstorms. Will launch on November 24th, bringing the winter season and additional content to the free to play title. And finally, Travis website Gamatsu reported that Bandai Namco announced Dragon Ball Fighters and Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 have each surpassed 8 million units sold. It's pretty impressive. And that's all for the news this week. And I'm going to kick it over to you now for this week's new game releases. On the 8th, we have Blue Reflection, Second Light. On the 9th, we have Airborne Kingdom, Bunny Factory, Jurassic World Evolution 2, Tiny Tina's Mm. Assault on Dragon Keep, A Wonderland's One-Shot Adventure, which sounds like a porno. On the 10th, we have 890B, and then we have a pretty old bunny, which is unrelated to <laughs> Bunny Factory. We also have <laughs> Pantsu Hunter, back to the 90s. Um, in in Pantsu Hunter, you hunt uh, women in pantsuits, and the ultimate boss is Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the final um, boss is Hillary Hill Dog. Real Farm, premium edition, which is interesting. On the 11th, we had American Hero. Perfect, perfect day to release that game. Uh, for Veterans yeah. Day, we have Epic yeah. Chef, Gravitational, the GTA Trilogy, Libel Rabble, My Universe <laughs> Interior Design, which is I highly recommend that. On the Road, P- on PS5 on and PS4. That, the sequel's mm-hmm. called On the Road Again. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> the um, uh, the uh, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Anniversary Edition, which is the 10th edition of that fucking game. Then we have Treasures of the Aegean. <laughs> we get one a year. And on the 12th, we have American Hero again. Came out two days in a row. Uh, oh, then we God. have <laughs> <laughs> Battlefield 2042 Early Access. Blacksmith of the Sand Kingdom, which huh. I doubt that that's great, but a Blacksmith huh. like sim game could actually, I think, do pretty well if it was done right. I agree. And we have a Christmas break two head to head. Mm. Ginyug. Mm. Ginyug, like Doug. Gin Ginug. Ginug. Mm. That game is on PS5 and PS4. Puzzle Frenzy. Uh-huh. Venus Impossible Dream, which is about the difficulty of following your superstar sister Serena into the tennis world. <laughs> and then we have Whiskey Mafia on the four, that's, which sounds that's fun. intriguing. Yeah, it does. That's intriguing. 
so it's pretty awesome that we somehow got twenty the, the year twenty forty two early, uh, twenty years early. Pretty yeah, crazy. and we also Sorry, got Christmas yeah. break to two months early. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we sure did. So anyway, uh, that's everything this week. Let's see, GTA trilogy probably the biggest one there alongside the Elder Scrolls. Well, I take that back. Battlefield twenty forty two is probably the biggest one. Um, Jurassic World Evolution two that's a big one. So not a bad week. Good week of stuff there. All right, let's start to wrap the show up, Travis, by discussing what we've been playing and anything we're looking forward to. What do you got? I missed two days this week because of a wedding, so that was a lot of fun. Boo. Played <laughs> played 2K, and we're kind of at the point with it for me where I'm kind of bored. The XP stuff is... it's. I feel like I had so much more XP stuff to try to get in Season 1. Uh, maybe that. Maybe it's just... Maybe it's not, and I'm projecting that onto the game. I don't know. But last night... You know, I kind of got to my breaking point last night where, you know, I, I like my team. Um, I've, I've gotten three amethysts this week. Um, Coach, as Coach Cal says, I like my team. And I got on and I was like, I need a couple more tokens to get this, to get my first diamond card from the rewards market, yada, yada, yada. So I started playing and there's an Anthony Edwards challenge, which is a, a 750 XP and you could do it with any Anthony Edwards. So I bought a really cheap Anthony Edwards card. And immediately bought it for two grand and immediately did not enjoy enjoy it. Like <laughs> you know, trying to it's forty eight points and you know, sometimes you have to grind for this stuff and it just wasn't fun. Like I couldn't get by anybody, I was missing wide open shots. I mean, I went through two games, I quit one because I didn't like the matchups. Cause it was like he's a sapphire and I'd put two emeralds with him and I'd come out and like I'd have a diamond Nicholas Batum on him. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, of course I can't score. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, I got pissed off and literally spent the next game. I got down 6 nothing, and it, I got so frustrated. I was like, I'm just going to try to kill every motherfucker I'm playing against. So I just started driving at the rim and tried to dunk on everybody. And um, eventually I managed to break the seal. And he's, for me at least, he's like those quarterbacks on NCAA football you'd randomly get where they'd have to warm up before they could throw the ball. Like the whole first possession, like, you might as well yeah. just run up the middle and get sacked a couple of times because you can't throw it for whatever reason. It's it's like that with him. And, you know, some people might make the argument, well, he's a volume shooter. He has that badge. Like I have dudes with gold volume shooter and bronze volume shooter, and they don't have that problem. So right, you right. tell me. So I was already annoyed by that. I did sell that card and make made VC off of it or my team credits off of it, whatever the fuck they're called. Fine. <laughs> So then I was like, you know, I'm going to try to do this Robert Covington thing and get him to an amethyst because, you know, he might be useful on my bench. All I had left to do was get make a three-pointer, and I counted it up. I went, because I was using Anthony Edwards at the time. So I was like, all I have to do is make a three. And I did all of my Anthony Edwards games where I scored 48 points and did not make one three with Robert Covington. And, like, I was shooting them in transition or off of a drive. So they were open threes. I wasn't shooting with people on me. I was on back-to-back games. I was 0 for 8 and 0 for 11 from three. I missed 19 straight threes with him. Jesus. And that doesn't even seem possible. And two of them were like red releases. Those are my fault because I hadn't shot with them before. But like Mm -hmm. none of them were contested. The most contested I had was 20%. And that's because I I had a really bad possession. I got kind of stuck. I had to shoot it. And it was 20%. Contested. Still missed it. Slightly early, slightly didn't matter. Wouldn't go in. It was like I was playing on Hall of Fame or something. So I'm, I'm ready to just peel paint off the wall because it's just it's like so frustrating. I'm not having any fun. If you count the other games where I missed wide open threes with them, I might have missed thirty threes in a row. I have no idea. So I bought my Mark Eaton card. And I was like, I want to play with Mark Eaton, so I'm going to load up this challenge you can do every day and just play it. Play one game. Missed two wide open threes with him to start the game off a transition in the corner wide open. And then I ended up I ended up making a three finally in the game. I green lit a three. It's the only one I made. And he's an amethyst now. I'll probably never play him now because I got so mad at the game. Um, then I tried to do the Gary Harris one. And I'm not doing these for any reason. I'm just doing this stuff to like have them be amethyst. Like I'm not even going to play the card. I'm just grinding to do it. And like... yeah. He's a dunk tober cart, and I can't dunk with him. I have to get five dunks. I can't dunk with him. I can't make threes. He's wide open. Like, I literally just turned the game off. Like, 
I was so frustrated because I Is don't that what really, happened to you last night? Yeah, I just fucking turned the game off because I was going to break my controller. I was like, I made it a year with this controller. Time to fucking throw it through the wall. Like, <laughs> I don't understand the difficulty of it. Like, there's a guy on me who's a gold. I'll do like a pick and roll. They'll switch off. There's a gold guy on me and I can't, I can't shake him. I can't get around him. I can't. I'll do a step back and I'm open. I'm not contested. I'm open. And unless I green light it, it doesn't go in. Like, I just don't understand what the difficulty is. It doesn't make sense. And, like, you know, I, when I was playing with my Emerald Trey Young and I was evolving him, I could hit whatever the fuck I wanted. So, what's the difference? Like, why is it so hard all of a sudden? I don't understand. So, like I said, my team's cool, but like, I want to play actual games now. And can I play Domination on Superstar with that team? I don't know. I mean, you don't know until you try. Is it going to be, I don't know. It's just, it's just, I don't, I'm not sure it'll be fun. It might be to the point to where I need to just play like a franchise and leave it at that. And that's what the game is for me. Mm. I'm just not enjoying any of the season two stuff. So I got frustrated and I bought the GTA trilogy and downloaded it before I got off. That's all I did. Oh. So it's on my, it's on the thing now. I thought oh, I decided man. when I get pissed off, I can play 16 hours of GTA three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did you also go ahead and get that uh, Battlefield Gold Edition? No, I did not drop two hundred dollars. Oh God, that, that's the answer to your problems. You just get Battlefield and you can play that instead. But, uh, yeah, why don't you buy it for what me? else? <sighs> you already bought GTA. You had it right there, right yeah, there in just, your pocket. No, it was thirty more dollars. I know, but you could have saved thirty because you spent sixty on GTA. You could have just spent thirty more dollars on on uh, Battlefield. You have been good God. to go. You sound like a fucking salesman. Like, yeah, you just, if you trade this car and then trade in your dick hole, you can get this car. It's EV8. <laughs> it's, it has the E88 oil in it. I don't know. What are you saying? Oh, uh, are you not, are you getting Battlefield next Friday then? Or, yeah, yeah. Next Friday. Yeah. I'm going to oh, get it. See. I'm going to immediately run straight into a tornado. See, see, you spent 120 instead of 90. So, anyway, okay. what else? Anything, anything else you've been playing? I don't remember anything else I played. So if I did, no idea what it was. Fuck them. Well, I also played NBA 2K22 quite a bit of that. I'm still grinding through the XP, uh, season XP stuff. I'm uh, level 31, I think. I'm enjoying it more than you, it sounds like. Um, I've, I've ran, I have basically ran out of challenges except for the domination ones, which I've been putting off for last. So I'm going to start on the domination stuff soon and uh, see how that goes. But, uh, you know, nothing really new to report there. Just see how that goes. I've played one of those and uh, it frustrated me a bit, about it, but I've improved my team. So we'll see how it goes. I uh, also played more of, um, of, well, maybe I haven't reported on this before, but I played the last of us part two on PS five over the last weekend. I'm, I'm on like chapter seven or eight, which is early on it's early days, but God, dude, that game is so good. Just reiterating that it's, my second favorite game of all time. Uh, fantastic, just from top to bottom. Plays so much better on the PS5 in terms of just performance with the 60 frames. That's That game is just something special. So i really, really loving that. And then I also got the GTA Trilogy this week. So today I played a little bit of GTA 3. Or maybe it was yesterday, I don't remember. But played a little bit of that and... It's definitely an upgrade. It's definitely a remaster. I didn't expect nearly as much as some other people who are expecting it to be like a remake. So I had my expectations appropriately in check. Uh, the cool thing about it is like immediately playing GTA 3, like you just almost immediately remember everything. Even though it was 20 years ago, you're just like, oh yeah, that's over here and this is there and I remember <laughs> this and yada yada. So that's really cool, the nostalgia of it. I am playing in performance mode and I do, I am getting frame drops, which is a widespread problem somehow playing a PS2 game on the PS5. I am a little discouraged by it because like I told you earlier today on San Andreas, for instance, the, they, they're having some more serious graphical glitches, like the rain in the game basically makes it, I thought it looked impossible, cool. impossible to see. <laughs> Uh, it looked like it would give me a headache or a stroke. So I don't know. My, my spirits are a little dampened. Uh, <laughs> I just imagine it, you having a stroke. Why is that funny? 
<laughs> my spirits are a little dampened o- over it all, but uh, it, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going with it and, uh, and, you know, for my own opinion and, uh, you know, if nothing else, it's tripped down memory lane. So I don't, I don't think it's as bad as people are making it out to be, but I also think that there is a level of jank and things that should have been addressed that they did not, but we'll see. They may address it. They may never address it. And then finally, I've been playing a lot of Battlefield 2042 today because I took a day off and um, been crushing. Played a lot with John. Put some clips on Twitter. Put one on YouTube. Uh, ran into my first tor- tornado and uh, went for a ride. That was hilarious. Uh, blew up my first tank. That game is so. That game is so good. I will say I have a couple of complaints. There are several quality of life. Uh, things that are missing, some things that are missing that don't make any sense. There's no like leaning or like looking over cover. There's no like tactical movement. Can you crouch? You can crouch. Yeah, you can go prone and that sort of thing. Slide, but you can't like. I don't know. It's just weird. Like I don't know why. I feel like you used to be able to like peek over cover or out of cover, and you can't do that anymore. And then there's no voice chat. And there's no in-game voice chat. You just had to talk, you know, at a party. I think that's weird. And uh, the one, one other thing, my only other complaint, I guess, really, is that the maps feel a little bit too big. Uh, even with 128 players on PS5, it still feels a little too big. I think they could have reduced the, the scale of those somewhat. That's really it. Other than that, it's a ton of fun. Really enjoying it. Played a lot today. And there was not really a time where I wasn't having fun. So. That's uh, about as good of a review as I can give it for now. So push forward with that. Yeah, that's it. So I think it's time for us to get out of here. If you guys enjoyed the show, don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss an episode every Monday in your podcast feed. Also, if you will be so kind as to rate, review, and all that good stuff, our show, wherever you're listening, we would very much appreciate it. And finally, if you would share the show with a friend or a loved one who may enjoy a PlayStation podcast where they can get all of the week's news, rumors, and more in less than 90 minutes. We would be much obliged. It's time for us to go now. It's getting late. And uh, you guys have a great week. Take care. And we'll talk at you next time. Bye-bye.